Hello everybody, it's Jabar here. Is it just me who notices the striking similarities between Japanese and African languages? And before I begin, I just want to make something clear. Many people come to my videos and assume that I'm one of those annoying, bigoted, Afrocentric people who try to preach pseudo-history and basically be a culture vulture. And as annoying and frustrating it is when people come here with those assumptions, I don't really blame them because YouTube is so polluted by people like that. The only thing it does is make people like me who actually back up my sources with references and evidence less credible. So before we start, I'm just going to make one thing clear. I am not trying to claim that Africans made it to Japan in pre-colonial times or vice versa. I'm not trying to claim that that happened, nor I'm trying to claim that there's any evidence suggesting that it did happen. I'm simply pointing out many striking parallels that I find between the two cultures and languages, and I don't know why those parallels exist, and for all I know there was pre-colonial contact. I simply found this topic extremely interesting, it's something I've been thinking about for a really really long time, and I put this video together for discussion purposes only. And these parallels may very well just be mere coincidences. So as a native speaker of English, the only language I really know is English. I don't know any African languages, I don't know any Asian languages, and frankly I don't know any other languages other than English. With that said, all of my observations are purely observations. So please take the things I say with a grain of salt. So now that all that stuff's out of the way, now let's get to the meat of this video. So one of the things I've noticed throughout my many years of researching African history, cultures, and kingdoms and languages, I noticed that they bear striking similarities to Japanese. One of the most obvious similarities is that nearly every Japanese word and every African word ends in a vowel. And by African, I'm referring more particularly to, but not specifically, to Niger-Congo languages. The rare few words in these languages that do not end in vowels almost always end with the letter N. Another similarity is, unlike most other languages of East Asia, Japanese is a tonal language. However, given the specific part of Asia that Japanese lies, there are very few tonal languages in the surrounding areas. Contrary to Africa, where nearly every language within Sub-Saharan Africa is tonal. And if you don't know what a tonal language is, as opposed to European languages such as English, German, and French, tonal languages are strongly reliant on the way you say a word, the tone of your voice when you say the word. One good example of this would be Mandarin Chinese. In this language, the word ma has four different meanings from mother, hemp, horse, and scold. If you say the word ma at a high tone, it would mean mother. If you say it at a tone that starts high and ends low, it would mean scold. Tonal languages such as these are most commonly found in Sub-Saharan Africa and Southeast Asia. Japan, however, doesn't lie within any of these regions. The Japanese language is quite an oddity in comparison to most East Asian languages. In fact, the Japanese language is considered a language isolate. What this means is that it cannot be linked to any specific greater language family, such as Afroasiatic, Sino-Tibetan, or Indo-European. Thus, its origins are unknown. Other language isolates include the Sango language of Central African Republic and the Basque language of Spain. Linguists generally have no idea where language isolates have their origins. Due to the fact that aside from a few loan words from nearby languages, they don't have any relation to any language families in the entire world. With that being said, since language is one of the primary means of linking one culture to the next, Japanese being an isolated language, its origins remain a mystery. I do want to bring up again that I don't know Japanese nor do I know any African languages. So I'm aware that the similarities that I see and hear within the languages may simply just be skin deep. However, another one of the more obvious parallels between Japanese and African languages is just the similarity in words, names, and places. Though I had already noticed this before, I brought up this discussion to one of my Nigerian friends who belongs to the Yoruba ethnic group. And despite the fact that he is a native speaker of the Yoruba language, even he can see the similarities between the two languages. I'm sure you also noticed that during this conversation, I brought up the fact that Edo was the historical name shared between the Benin Empire and the Japanese. The modern-day West African city of Edo is now known as Benin City, and the modern-day Japanese version of Edo is now known as Tokyo. What's even more striking is that in the year 1457, the city of Edo was built in Japan, just 13 years prior to the city being renamed to Edo in the Benin Empire. So for several centuries, two kingdoms that were half the world away from each other shared the same name for their capital cities. 
by the way, the friend that I mentioned previously, I'll leave a link to his YouTube channel in the description. I couldn't help but notice that even his name sounds Japanese. Also, the name of the character of my soon-to-be animated series is named Kanoro, which people often mistake for Japanese. Many examples of this can be found all throughout Africa. For example, the largest West African empire in history was known as the Songhai, which sounds remarkably Asian. Then you have the capital city of Somali, known as Mogadishu. Here's a list of some Yoruba words that I have compared side by side next to Japanese words. I also came across this list of Igbo words. Lastly guys, before I get to my last topic, again I'm going to reiterate again and again and again. This is not trying to say that Africans founded Japan or blah 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 blah, all the other stuff that you know, the We Was Kang stuff. This isn't any of that, okay? Just making that clear. I'm just going to briefly discuss the possibility of pre-colonial contact. So the first question would be, were Africans capable of sailing to Japan, or vice versa? And the answer to this question would be, yes. Though the Japanese did have ships capable of making fairly long voyages across the sea, they were used almost exclusively within the confines of the Japanese and the Chinese coastlines. And it wasn't until the Portuguese arrived in the 15th century, whom the Japanese referred to as the Nanban, literally translating to Southern Barbarians, that the Japanese made any serious efforts into building their own fleets of ships. Unlike the Japanese, many West African states had fairly sizable navies. However, they consisted almost exclusively of small river canoes and sailboats. So the tradition of sailing the seas was all but inexistent in West Africa. One exception to this would be the navy of the Mali Empire, which allegedly consisted of a fleet of over 2,000 ships, as described in an article published by BBC known as Africa's Greatest Explorer. In East Africa, on the other hand, the case was quite different. Sailing the seas and trading with lands as far away as China was an ancient practice for East Africans, and was done on a boat of indigenous origin known as the Mtepe. Which by the way, if you'd like to know more about these ancient East African sailors, please check out part 3 of my Cities Built by African series, which I'll link at the end of this video. Though there is no historical documentation verifying any contact between East Africans and Japanese, it is very well possible that they may have made it to Japan in ancient times. Lastly, I'll go over some very surprising similarities between West African and Japanese art and architecture. In Western architecture, a building is usually constructed and it's surrounded by a yard or a garden. East Asians and West Africans on the other hand share a different type of architecture in which they construct their buildings around the yard. These courtyard based structures were also similar in the fact that they both utilized large amounts of wood in their construction, more specifically in the pillars, and that they were built largely without the use of nails, instead relying on lashings, sockets, and holes. And the final thing I would like to discuss is artwork found within West Africa and Japan. In addition to the Yoruba language sharing similarities with the Japanese, I also find that some of their sculptures display very Asiatic characteristics. These sculptures date back from the 14th century and they were created by the Yoruba people from a kingdom known as Ife. And though some West Africans naturally do have Asiatic features, I've just always found it strange how so many of these heads consistently display these Asiatic characteristics, such as wide faces, high cheekbones, and almond shaped eyes. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of a Japanese sculpture and a Yoruba sculpture. Maybe it's just me, but their features are definitely extremely similar and the overall art style is extremely similar. So at this point, I know I'm beating a dead horse, but guys, I just want to stress it one last time. I'm not trying to claim that Africans explored and discovered Japan or the Japanese explored and discovered Africa or whatever. I'm not trying to claim any of that stuff. I'm not trying to claim it did happen, nor am I trying to claim it didn't happen because nobody really knows. And unlike those pseudo historic We Was Kangs people, I'm not going to conclusively say that something happened unless there's historical or archaeological evidence that proves it. 
So anyway guys, let me know your thoughts on this, your opinions, if you're a native speaker of Japanese or Yoruba or any African language. Let me know if maybe you've noticed these similarities as well because if you couldn't tell already, I'm extremely interested in this and I would love to know more information about it. And also everyone else, just let me know your thoughts on this topic. Do you think it's possible that there was some sort of pre-colonial contact between the Japanese and the African peoples? If so, make sure you just leave me some details on how you think it happened or why you think it happened and that would make for a really great discussion in my comment section. Other than that, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.